Before we start the video, I want to thank these people, Zack Scott Games and Gamers World Playground for my clips, and IGN for my thumbnail. Before we talk about Karadon, let's summarize the story really quick to see where we're going. Okay? Okay. Mysterious Pokemon flies out of crater. You then begin your journey. You then meet this Pokemon and help it out, right? Then in return it helps you out of kindness. Sweet Pokemon already. Then you get brought back to your classmate Nimona. Get more mystery to this Pokemon with a boy named Arvin. Meet a tech whiz named Penny. Bringing you all together to stop the ongoings in Area Zero. Meeting another form of this Pokemon. Then you stop the parent who's driven by their goal, then walk happily ever after. But after that quick story summary, let's see where our hero cried on it. Oh, he crash landed on the beach. You now some heroes have the finesse of a drunk driver. That's why he doesn't require a driver's license. Okay, that's pretty bad. You know the story. After giving him a sandwich, Crydon perks up, and he doesn't focus on you but the cave, which your character picks up on, showing that Crydon has something else that he or she <laughs> is more concerned of doing. But there is a nice little detail which shows Crydon looking back at you to show Crydon isn't selfish and cares about your safety, which shows how kind it is. Oh, fuck, bro. Let's just keep walking, Crydon. Damn it! I always gotta be the black Pokemon just walking in the wrong neighborhood. Then <laughs> some nigga just attacks. Okay, enough jokes. Watch as I still make jokes, but seriously. Cryon's first big moment comes in this scene, right? Where you see how he hesitates, you know, not wanting to lose his powers or just the trauma of not wanting to fight. But still, he still chooses to help you reaching his goal, the lighthouse, where Arvin promptly says it's lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's rough, buddy. But still, my number one, I didn't catch on my first playthrough, but I caught my second one. Now let's get into some lore, knowing that Koridon did live in this lighthouse with Sada and Arvin. Kept secret and hidden away from the world, not being able to explore it. But that's when something bad happens, and Korai and Sada left for ages. <laughs> like my nickname for him? Wink. Okay, I'm corny. But still, this is a good moment, right? Especially with the context of Arvin's dialogue. Knowing that Area Zero cost him a lot of pain and trauma, but he flew out to Sada's house to find some comfort, which adds more to their relationship, especially with what we'll get into later. Now we're getting to the most important part of our character, the treasure! My sunrise is to jolt. <gasps> so, uh, you scared me. <laughs> Where's the medic? Uh, let's just go to school now. Now, I know we're missing a scene with Koridon, but don't worry, we're gonna get to it later. But let's move on to the treasure hunt with Koridon, right? Where Koridon doesn't play a big role in Victory Road or in Team Star, unless you count Licking the major role. <laughs> so let's go to the Path of Legends. Well, we can skip the first time because it doesn't give us much information besides Karadon powers up eating the Herbal Mystica. But it's the second one that has something of character for Karadon, where Arvin reveals Mobile Fista after warming up to you and Karadon after he shouts at Karadon, obviously. But then, after he gives a little motivating speech, this gives Karadon a bit of character, showing that he's also motivated, walking a little forward to Arvin showing that he's also motivated to help Mephisto along with you the player character. This gives Koridon motivation, right? Not only trying to help Arvin and this will strengthen the relationship between them, seeing as how Arvin has problems with Koridon that we don't know him for right now. One small thing I want to talk about in Koridon and Arvin's relationship is how out of everyone he seems to pick up the most on Koridon's physical gestures. Like how he's understanding that Crawdon's trying to say thank you or something to him making a sandwich or him understanding that Crawdon's still worried about finding that other version of him. And another thing that's mostly interesting is how he, out of everyone, knows that Crawdon figures out that Crawdon has a mental block. And it's interesting for how he treats him. He doesn't treat him with hate, it's just out of confusion. It's just he connects him to losing his mom, which is interesting, and it's said in the story, so yeah. But now let's move on to the final Herbal Mystica scene to where it's just a sweet scene. It's really small though, but your player character just lightly places his hand on Koridon. Him or her, right? <laughs> Sorry. But they lightly place their hand on him. Just showing that they how much your player character values Koridon. 
It's just sweet to see you two grow together on this journey as you two nod your heads together knowing that you did a good thing for a person. And it's just another thing I like about Pokemon how people in Pokemon can come together to help one another. It's just like what Nimona said about you two. You two are in sync. Now that we're in Era Zero, right, let's talk about a weird story beat that pops up. And it's dealing with home because as soon as you walk into Era Zero, it's like, BAM, the way home. Now it's not that it just pops up that it's bad, right? Because you know, all the super quests have this. <laughs> like, like for example, BAM, Victory Road. There you go. But it's just the fact that the way home doesn't really tie the treasure. Now I know with the Sada stuff it ties the treasure, but with all the three major ones, it has the character saying, Hey, oh, this is my greatest treasure, or it deals with that main character. But with Karina, here's the thing about him, he doesn't really well talk. <laughs> so we don't know what type of motivations of treasure he wants. It just goes to home, right? Now he still has a discernible personality, right, with the sandwich love, but it just sometimes feels like he's alone for the ride. Now, let's go back to that, to where he doesn't talk. We still don't know what he wants. That's why I brought that motivation with Mopathesis, Mo because he seemed really eager to help, just like you as a player character. Now, back to home, right? We see all, how all the characters open up about their home lives and their families. Now, let's tie the, the player character to Koridon, to where you both have this small little thing about him, right, with your mother saying, you can come home anytime you like, sweetie. Or collide on to our here to where he has to go back home. Or hell, even the smaller thing to where he chooses where he chooses to fly out of Area Zero to go back to Sada's home. Which does show how much he loves her. But yeah, I think that's all I got out of this home thing, right? It's just a weird story beat that pops up. It's not bad, but it does appear out of nowhere. But now let's go back to Area Zero. Now, let's talk about Kawada and Sada's relationship. First thing I want to touch on is how out of everywhere, Koridon flew out of Area Zero, the place that he hated the most or feared the most, to fly back to her house, showing how much he really did cherish those memories there, and he could find a little comfort there. It does show how much he loves her, or how just the mere voice, her mere voice, makes him come out of her, his Pokeball. Now, most of the time, Koridon comes out of his Pokeball for a sandwich joke or how to mess with Penny. But this is one of the times to where he really... It's a serious moment where he comes out of this Pokeball to where he just wants to see her and when she leaves he gets sad walking up to the TV screen showing how much he miss her. Now here's what I also want to talk about how it's a bit one-sided for the relationship. I only say a bit right because we don't we don't really see Sada in air quotes <laughs> express her same love for Koridon on how she really cares about him. Now I only say a bit because you know she's not even here because of Karidon. Now it's not that it's bad, right? It's just it's a bit one-sided because you know how much she loves Karidon, bringing him home, um, taking care of him at her home, then dying for him. Hell, it's almost like that's the son she never had. Oh, I'm sorry, Arvin. Post saying me, the reason why it's one side is because Sada's actions are mostly told and not shown. The other Koridon in Area Zero, he does have much of a personality. He's a bit intimidating, territorial, and just more aggressive, but that's fine. You can just have a wall sometimes, and he serves that role really well. But our Koridon has been going through more of a mini character arc throughout this whole journey, to where we see him trust people more. Like the scene where you try to give him a sandwich on the beach, right? Just his facial expression alone tells it all. Just distrusting, he also sniffs the sandwich too to just really check it out. <laughs> but now we also see him how he gets more bravery to where this time he doesn't hesitate like he did before. He'll jump into head first now. And we see these traits build up more to where he's more open about his love for sandwiches. Trusting people more, hell, even playing with people like Penny, where he just licks her a lot. <laughs> then we also see how he's amazed at the world when you just stand around his eye animations that he just looks around. Then we see how he gets more brave. Well, not shown, but it's mostly through all of his speech leading up to this moment to where you throw the Pokeball and he does this. No hesitation. He looks back with a smile, with the sponge cheering him on, and he does it. I wish I could show the fight. My third favorite scene with Koridon. It's just a really small scene, but I love it. It's after everyone says, let's go home, right? Or let's head out. 
Arvin especially is beat up about losing his mom or dad twice now. <laughs> I'll just say mom. But yeah, they suggest it takes a long way home. And it's a funny scene, right? Because Karadon's pushing Arvin with just his head. And it's also a sweet scene because we know that Karadon's uplifting Garvin just like how he did for him. But then here comes my favorite scene where Crydon gets petted by Arvin. It's just a nice sweet scene that shows how mu how far Arvin's come as a person to pet the thing that he associated with losing his mom, especially saying ruining his childhood. Now, it doesn't really show much for Crydon since he never had any animosity towards Arvin, but it still is a sweet scene to show how uh, Crydon's good actions in helping Morifista really came back to help him out more and earning a new friend. So I don't really have a home now, and it's sweet. I guess I don't know how else to explain this scene more. I just love it. Well, I guess that's it for Crydon's character. Let's get on to some smaller stuff than I in the video. moments of this video, I just want to go over my top five Crydon moments. Number five, when he pushes Arvin. It's just a funny scene and nice to see him help Arvin. Number four is when he helps you, showing his kindness and selling up his character arc. Number three, when Arvin pets Crydon. Just shows how far they come together. Number two is Crydon vs. Crydon, and he got his major character arc with the satisfying. Number one Crydon moment is the ending of the game, where he takes a picture knowing that he has a home now. Crydon is possibly my favorite character that ever came out the Pokemon series, or at least my favorite Pokemon, with his expressive facial features, <laughs> like this smile on my profile picture. His design is great to me, even though you know his wheels don't roll, and his moments. I don't know what to really say else about this character, I just love him. And he's one of the best done characters, as a Pokemon really. But I guess that's all. Goodbye, my precious friends. <laughs> I'm corny.